I'm Leon Scott Baxter, America's Romance Guru, and you are watching the seventh installment of Five Minutes of Relationship Investment. Now, if you've missed any of the first six episodes, go back and watch them. But today, I'll be talking to you about how to have a painless marriage. Let me say this right up front. There are many relationship experts, and we all basically say the same thing. If you want to have a strong and balanced and romantic relationship, you're going to need to be honest, uh, communicate, make time for each other, be flexible, you're going to need to do nice things for each other, etc., etc., etc. But see, the thing is, everybody already knows these things. It's kind of like health. You know, we all know what to do to be healthy. We know we need to exercise and eat right and drink a lot of water and get enough sleep, but still we go and we rent the DVD programs or we go ahead and hire a, a, a trainer or a professional. And why do we do that? Because they're there to remind us, to motivate us, and to inspire us. So my job as a relationship expert is not to reinvent the relationship wheel, but to remind you, to motivate you, and to inspire you. I do it by uh, using the analogy of finances, where, where John Gray uses planets, I use stocks and savings. Um, and it's easy for me to grasp this concept and, and apply it to my own marriage. And so my job is for, for you to want to apply this to your relationship by the end of each video. Um, I see relationships as accounts that, that we need to invest in today so we can get short-term as well as long-term results. And if we do it right, we can nearly guarantee a terrific return for each of our investments. How do you create a painless marriage? Well, when we invest financially, we, we need the resource of money to stock aside. But far too many of us, we, we claim that we don't have enough money to invest or to save. And that's, that's why making and creating a budget is so crucial. When you create a budget, you get the opportunity to see where you're spending your money. If it's bills, the gasoline, or your wardrobe, latte, cigarettes, etc. So once you know where your money is going, you can make appropriate changes and sacrifices to free up some cash for investing. Now that may mean living below your, your income level. So if you're making $150,000 a year, but you live like you're making $120,000, you could invest that extra $30,000. Now when you start to live this way, not even looking at the extra $30,000, just socking it away, investing doesn't hurt as much. It becomes painless. You don't feel the sacrifices. In relationships, it's not so much money that couples are short on, it's time. People always tell me, I'd love to spend time with my spouse, but I have to work. I have chores to do, and I gotta drop off the kids at school, hit the gym, answer my emails, I have to take a shower, I have to sleep, there's just no time. Well, what you need to do is you need to make a time budget for a week. How are you really spending your time? When you keep a food log or a financial budget, you often discover that there's more flexibility than you thought. Between work and the dishes, are you on Facebook? Do you watch Dancing with the Stars? How much time are you on the phone? How often are you texting? See, with a time budget, you discover the areas where you can consolidate and eliminate freeing up more time for your partner. We all get the same 24 hours a day, but live below your means. Live like you have only 23 and a half hours a day and invest that extra 30 minutes a day to your spouse. Also, a great way to guarantee you do this is by paying yourself first. Now, Mary Hunt, she's a financial contributor for Women's Day magazine. She says to stash aside 10% of your paycheck before you buy anything else. This 10% is not to be touched. With the other 90%, that's what you live on until your next paycheck. I say do the same thing with your relationship. At, at, the, at the start of each month, sit down with your partner and your planners, and based on the budgets you've already made, start penciling in time together. Schedule date nights, getaways, and yes, even intimacy. What you pencil in at the beginning of the month is like your 10% that you stash aside. It's not to be touched. All other events that pop up, they're, they're going to be scheduled around your relationship investments that you've already put down on paper, making your marriage a priority. Here's an activity to try if you're having trouble finding time for your relationship. First, pull together your partner and your planners. Then, look at next month. What days are still available and still open? Go ahead and schedule one date night for the month. Also, schedule at least one intimate activity. If you want to squeeze in more, go for it. Now, be sure you write these down. The act of writing is crucial and helps, helps to make it so that you will actually follow through. Now, go online and set up an auto, automatic reminder to yourself 
with a site like memotome.com. Make these events inflexible. Everything else needs to be worked in around them. Each month, reflect and decide if you want to change how you pay yourselves and how much to pay yourselves. When you get in this kind of habit, investing in your marriage becomes painless. And if you want more tips on investing in your relationship, pick up my book, The Finance of Romance, at Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, or my website, CouplesCommittedToLove.com, where you can also sign up for my free monthly newsletter for couples. And be on the lookout for our next video.